Hey everyone, let's have a quick look at the um, kind of a proof of concept. Now this is a very rough proof of concept. I don't expect what's been done here to actually make it to the final product. So it's very much a kind of a um, proof of concept of the microsites front end teaming kind of system. Just kind of trying to show how we're going to build something that will hopefully scale across all the types of microsites we've got to build for all the types of councils we've got to build them for. Um, so looking at the, the microsites proposition mirror board, uh, we've got a footer section here and from our litmus sites, you know, we, we, we looked at a number of uh, all, all the footers on, on the different lit litmus sites and come up with kind of commonalities between them. And we can see, you know, this one here has uh, four columns of four columns of something, let's say, whether it's text or uh, menu links or um, logos um, other ones then have something here that's kind of similar except this is instead of using four columns they're using one column and then we've got some privacy notices copyright notices and some logos um other ones we've got which have uh, again you can see there's you know logos and privacy notices copyright notices um a lot of them actually seem to be kind of a, a subset of this one here which i think is from uh, birkenhead so this is kind of i suppose the most fully formed out in terms of if you have all the things that this has, you can create all of the different or some sort of a variation of all of the different photos that we see. So this one has this silhouette uh, here in the background or kind of banner. It's got four columns of, again, of something, whether it's uh, uh, social media links or a menu or a text block and call to action. Then it's got the copyright notice down here at the bottom, an address, uh, this kind of a, what, what do we call a housekeeping menu for privacy notice, cookies policies, and then a, some logos and again whether it's council logos or partner logos or sponsor logos or, or, or whatever whatever it is so based on that work and let me just turn off the notification on my other computer here for a second um okay so based on that work then we we, we went and looked at uh you know what are the kind of commonalities and we, we designed this as a as a wireframe now again this is very much proof of concept and liable to change so it's just a kind of an intro video. So we, we thought, okay, there's a banner image type thing at the top. So whether that's an image or whether that's a silhouette or something uh, that can go to the top. Then there's four columns and you can put whatever you want in these columns. So there'll be kind of text areas. So put in a list of links or a text block or, you know, an, an embed of, of, of something and fill out one, two, three or four of them, uh, which, whichever, whatever you want to do yourselves. Um, then we've got a, um, a row of logos. So again, these are it could be a row of one, might just be the council logo, or it could be a row of six logos from six different partners for whatever the microsite campaign uh, that you're running is. And then we've got this section here, which gives us the um, housekeeping menu. So privacy, cookies, accessibility statements, those kinds of things. And then a copyright notice and a powered by local gov Drupal notice. And every single thing on this page then is uh, optional. So you know if you don't want to have a big, if you don't have a banner image, don't put in a banner image. There won't be a big blank space left there. Just it, just that space will, will collapse. The same here, if you've only got two blocks of text to put in, well then just put in two blocks of text. If you've only got one logo or no logos, but in as many as you have, every, everything will be, will be um, <clears throat> everything will be uh, uh, optional. So looking at um, here, what I've done is I, I've taken um, uh, the fostering subsite overview page and I've added this as uh, uh, an item inside uh, uh, a microsite. The microsite is called Group One because it's 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 easy for me to know what Group One is. Then and I call the other one Group Two and Group Three. If I give them actual names, it's hard to remember which one is doing which bit of testing. So on this one here, then we've got you can see this big image here at the bottom. Now don't don't worry about the size of that. That that, that will change. So that that's kind of our banner field. So whether you put in an image or a silhouette or whatever, that will take up the full width of the screen here at the moment. Uh, then I've got four columns of text. So the, the first one I put in a list of links. The second one I put in a list of links. The third one I put in just some text. And the fourth one I put in uh, just some text. And then I got a row of uh, logos. Um, and again, I've put in six. You can put in as many logos as you want. There could be just four, there could be three. And then we've got our uh, housekeeping menu here, our copyright notice here, and our powered by local gov Drupal here. And uh, if we didn't fill out all of those fields, if we only filled out a subset of those fields, so on this page here, I've taken um, our demo demo paragraph types, I think it is, page, and I've added this into group number two. So that's, group two is a second microsite. And for the footer on this one here, I've said, I just want to fill out first block, 
second block, third block, and I've left fourth block free. Uh, I don't want any copyright notice. I don't want any banner. I don't want any uh, logos. And I do want to leave the local gov Drupal uh, powered by um, notice here at the bottom. So you can see you know, that it's all optional. Just fill out whatever fields that you want to. Then if you want to change some things, let's, so let's, um, well, actually on this one here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it first. So if I go to group number two here, and I'll edit this. Uh, I can come here to this footer tab here and say that for the width of the um, of the footer, I don't want it to be full width with the content centered. I want it to be uh, the same width as the content area. Software update, uh, cancel. Now, so I want it to be the same width as the content area. And I'll click save here. And you see now that the, the foot now is just the same width as the main content area. And you could change the background color down to white or whatever you, you want it yourselves. Or I can say that I want the footer to be um, the same width, sorry, the full width of the full page. So what it is by default was the full width with the content centered. Uh, uh, so the, 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 the footer would be 100% of the screen width, but the content will only be uh, the same width as the, the general content area. But here I'm going to say I want it to be full width, so the content and everything is going to scale out and bleed out to the full width of the page. So you can see here now this has got over to the right right hand side. Um, after that, then you, we might say we want to put in some extra uh, colors and things like that. So let's say the the colors I've chosen here for default are the same colors as uh, Essex County Council. I, I think that that kind of wine that Essex are using is a, is a it's a beautiful color. So I thought that's. A, Let's give a little nod to that. So well done, well done, Essex. Um, but let's pretend, <laughs> let's pretend we're Irish, and uh, we want to use some green, white, and gold in, in, instead. So we come down here to our footer background color, and I'm going to say that that the background color I want to be E A E A E A. So that's that's a very light gray. Now we can put in these hex colors, or you can put in a HSL value, which could be uh, two five five and. Uh, 100 and 100 you know that could be, I don't know what that is exactly but it's probably some sort of a gray or you can put in um, uh, a, a word from that, that evaluates to a CSS color such as light uh, light gray or if you're American light gray or you can put in the word blue you know any any, any valid CSS um, uh, property will, will work here so just for this one I'm going to say EA 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 interestingly enough for EA sports their background color is actually a a a e a e a, which I thought is very kind of, very clever, uh, and then the, the footer text color. Let's say that that's going to be a dark gray, so we'll go with um, three three three. So it's it's not exactly black, but it's it's a very dark gray, and then the footer link color. Let's say that's going to be green, and the footer hover color is going to be orange. So we like the Irish flag. So we've got a kind of an almost white background, and then we've got uh, green links and orange on hover. So let's save this. Now if we come down to our footer, we can see that the background now has gone to a light gray. The links have changed to green, and when I hover them, they go to orange. Rather than over here, the default hover state was a uh, yellow color. And this is kind of what I, I guess we're, we're going to kind of aim towards, that, that we can we can do the same then for different layouts within the page, and then we can do the same for the header. Uh, section as well, you know, for whether you want the full width header or a contained header and background colors on the header and then the different colors for the for the links in the header and, and the hover states and things like that. Um, and to do that, then it's it's actually the code is, is pretty simple here. If you look at the variables.css file, so what I've done is I've created a, um, a team that's based on the local gov base team itself. So so we're going to, so the, the base team is local gov base, so we're using as much as we can from local gov base our variables to CSS. We've just got a few extra variables here called uh, footer background color, footer text color, footer link color, and footer link hover color. And I've given them default colors of this one here, accent, which evaluates to the Essex, uh, Essex kind of wine. And then the footer text and link colors are white. Put them as white because they'll be on dark background. And then the footer hover color is just yellow at the moment. That's, I'm going to guess that's changed into something else. But that's all I've, all I've done here for this to, to, to get that far. After that then, I... Uh, where am I now? Look, we'll go make sure it's base team. Here we do a few checks for um, if there's a value in the footer background color field. And if there is, then we'll we'll use that value to uh, add, uh, sorry, to override the footer background color CSS variable with whatever value is in that field. And we do the same then for the text color uh, to, to swap the text color out and the same with the link color 
uh, to swap out the, the link color. And what that does is on our body class at the top of our page up here, on our the classes in our body element here at the top, um, it adds a new style uh, attribute and it overwrites background color, footer background color to be EA, 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 footer text color to be 333, footer link color to be green, and the footer hover color to be orange. So these kick in over here. And what they do then is they override um, what we had seen in our variables.css file. So our variables.css file will give us our, our default. So everything can, can, everything starts looking from a looking good perspective, let's say. And then on a per microsite, you can override the different colors. And that's that's going to hold true then for, for all the other um, sections on the page. Um, if you want to put two two blocks of text here in, in the center, at the moment, what you can do is just fill out uh, text block number two and text block number three. So if text block number one was empty, for example, uh, ah, <laughs> sorry, that didn't work there. Yeah, I need to fix up that. I thought I had done such a way that blocks two and three would always remain in here in the center. It was like that yesterday. Uh, I get that, get that fixed. So, so that, then, then it means that, you know, if you wanted to have just two blocks and they're going to take up 50% each, you could fill out just block one and block three, or, you know, uh, if you wanted just three blocks that would take up 33% each or whatever, you could fill out just one, two and three, things like that. Um, that's it. That's, that's, that's a very brief overview of it. Like I say, it's very much proof of concept. It's very much me working on what I imagine, uh, the back end code is going to look like I'm going, going to in interact with, um, yeah. Any thoughts? Uh, let us know. We're always open to questions.